I was incredibly excited because in winning, I believe that this is an opportunity to show everyone and inspire them to go after their dreams, no matter their circumstances, their obstacles, no matter how old they are, no matter how young they are, you can achieve that dream if you just don't give up. And that's something I've done. I tried this four times and the fifth time I won. And aside from that, obviously I'm, I'm not the youngest. In fact, I'm the oldest to hold this title. I'm 58 years old and just proud to be able to show everyone that you should never give up. You've got breath, you've got that desire, you've got that drive, learn from any of your past mistakes, grow from that and go after every single dream. As a teenager, actually in my entire life that I can remember, I've been a singer in the church. Um, that was the beginning at two years old in little choirs. And I continued into my teen years singing on stage um, at church in weddings. And I found myself drawn to pageantry because it was actually an opportunity to showcase my talent outside of the church because my father was a pastor, both of my grandfathers. So I was only able to listen to Christian music, gospel music and sing in those venues. So being able to step on a stage and sing somewhere outside of the church and outside of a wedding, that was an amazing opportunity for me. So in 1985, I won the title of Miss Black Sacramento. And after winning that title, I was invited to sing the national anthem for the Sacramento Kings. And I did that for 11 consecutive seasons. I sang at least one game each season, the national anthem. So that was the, singing in front of thousands of people that's my jam. <laughs> that's what I love to do. Um, and I'm hoping that that's what I'll be doing as the reigning Mrs. California American and possibly your Mrs. American in August, on August 19th. Education is the most important. It goes, it's a big part of my family. My grandfather always told each of us, the grandchildren, his own children, my dad and his eight siblings, study hard and remember it's you. And um, so moving on into the area of education, not only continues service, but I am able to fuel other minds to study hard, remember it's them and work hard to reach that academic goal, that career goal, which can change throughout your life. And it should, um, because you want to evolve. But being an educator, I have taken that very seriously, especially as a mother myself. I've always looked at the students as if they were my own. And how would I want my child's teacher to teach and treat and care for my student, my child, because that's where you spend the majority of your waking hours as a child. I went to Norte Del Rio High School. Now the OGs of Sacramento, you will know what that is. It's in Del Paso Heights, down the road from Grant High School. I was the last graduating class. Shout out to the class of 1982, Norte Del Rio Dons. Um, I was the last homecoming queen and one of the last student body presidents. And then we shut down and everyone else went to either Grant High School or Rio Linda. But one of the things that was so amazing at Norte Del Rio is that we had such a blended student population. I think every nationality was represented and we were all connected and friends. And uh, so to move into education and see these students in my class and being able to speak, you know, teach, to, teach them and acknowledge their their differences as part of the beauty of the world um, and, and to help them 
uh, recognize the contributions of their ancestors, that means the world to me. I'm sure those butterflies are going to be all over the <laughs> place, just rolling around in my belly. But you know, it's a good thing I love butterflies. All right. It's my favorite insect. It also happens to be the state insect for California. I feed off of that energy and I will feed off of that coming from all the other women as well. We're all coming in with those butterflies. We're all going to be a bit nervous. The trick is, how will you use that? And um, I, I just want to be prepared to use all of those beautiful butterflies to my advantage. I'm excited to have this opportunity to make a difference by partnering with Komen and helping bring that organization back to this area so that we have that giant more than pink walk here again in Sacramento. The next one will be in San Francisco and that's in October, but I want it back here in this city and I want to help spearhead head to make that happen. When you hear Komen, you know it's the organization that is the leading organization that's battling against breast cancer and helping women of all backgrounds, of all ethnicities, of all walks of life, get in and, and get those mammograms so that if there is a pea size, a tiny size bit of cancer, it can be detected, snatched, eradicated, and lives are saved. So that is important because there is a disparity within our communities and minorities are at a greater risk of dying of this terrible, terrible disease. So working with the Coleman organization to help fundraise for research to get women um, or breast cancer patients the services that they really, really need um, to help spread the word of how to reduce your risks. You know, being able to work with them to do those things means a lot. My mother was diagnosed with it after I first competed for the title of Mrs. California American back in 2010. They did not give her a good diagnosis. Well, I take that back initially. They did. And they said she was fine after treatment. However, not even a year later, not even a year later, it had come back and had really gotten aggressive in her body. But they didn't detect that right away. They told her this, that, and the other. And so by the time it was diagnosed as a very, you know, bad stage. Um, they didn't give her much time at all. That's when I said, no, that we're not going to let that be the final say. We're going to figure out how to fight this. Let's go find some kind of research, some kind of cocktail that is going to get you moving. And that's what Komen does. However, you know, I, we didn't reach out necessarily to that service until I partnered with them along with my sister and we started racing for the cure and it brought my mother great delight. I mean, really, I can, I still remember the light on her face when she saw us raising money and running on her behalf. It meant everything. So it means everything to me to continue this effort, this mission partnering directly with Komen. So it's this, this means a lot. Life has these beautiful twists and turns and you can call it beautiful when you find the beauty in whatever the raggedy part was. <laughs> There's always something that you can build on top of and, and use it for the good. My life has absolutely not been perfect. I've had so many bumps in the road, yet I have got this crown on my head. I'm telling you, again, it, it, it was a journey just to get here, but it's been so worthwhile. And I do hope that the story of me, a teacher that has taught 30 years in total, 25 with Elk Grove, four with 
Davis, my alma mater is UC Davis, by the way, and uh, a year in Del Paso Heights, 30 in total, being 58 years old, staying in the game, being married 28 years, almost, almost 28 years, and having raised two amazing children. One is an attorney and one is a recent graduate of UC Merced, a basketball player, um, I, I should say a student athlete. Um, you can, and again, in doing all of that, so many bumps in the road, but you learn from that. You learn from that, you take the good, you make it gooder. Okay, that's not a real word, but I like saying that. <laughs> you make it better, you make it the best. And, and you're here on earth, the journey's not over. Miracles happen every day, I believe that. And um, that's how I'll be stepping out in Vegas, ready to clinch that next crown, that next title. So I had thyroid cancer right after I had my second child. I was devastated, scared. That word cancer, yikes. Um, and I have been cancer free for as, just about as long as my son is here. So he's 24, so just about 24 years cancer free. And I have my voice because one of the things in that surgery, if they had the teeny tiniest nick on my vocal cords, and I'm a singer now, and I'm a soprano, so hitting those high notes, he told me there was a chance I may not be able to sing those notes anymore. He told me that there'd be a chance I couldn't even speak anymore. And being a teacher as well as a singer, but most importantly, my life, I didn't want cancer to take me out. Um, this, this fortunately was an amazing success. Whatever your goal is, whatever your dream is, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Make sure it is what you love to do. Make sure it's what lights you up so that when others see you doing it, they feel that and you inspire them because of what you're doing. Do all you can to get there. Study if that's what it takes, be dedicated. And whatever bumps in the road come your way, just get over it, have faith, believe you can pull through and everything will absolutely come together because we're here to work for the greater good. We wanna serve and we also wanna live our dreams. And um, I think we should all, we all deserve to be happy and we, all should just do our best to be good people.